Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host Scott and with me as always, like every week, is Dan. Yes, how's things this week with you? I'm going to say the same as every week. It's been busy, it's been good, but... You've had a couple of deadlines I hear. I have, crazy deadlines, but I'm really looking forward to this week's episode. And me actually. Yeah. So as many of you know, or well our regular listeners will know, that this isn't just a swimming podcast for or about the elite side of swimming. It's not. We want to cater to every aspect of swimming. And yeah, so, exactly. And so we we want to bring feel-good stories and challenges, basically. People are doing amazing swimming challenges, like swimming the channel, all sorts. And we want to bring publicity to those because traditional media outlets will only focus on the elite side of swimming. Where, whereas there's so much more. There's it's It's a community, isn't it? It is. It is. It's not like most other sports. There's so many different avenues to swimming. And this is where this week's episode comes in, actually. Yeah. So who do we have on this week's show, Dan? We do. We have a very special guest. Her name is Lauren Turner. She's just done this incredible challenge for for charity. She's swam 24 kilometers in 24 beaches over 24 hours. Yeah. Nuts. Absolutely incredible. And she's raised a hell of a lot of money as well. Yeah. I think at the point of recording this, it's well over £4,000. Yes. It's quite incredible. Which is just incredible. So we cannot wait to get her on this show and talk about this. It's a very unique challenge because, well, I've not heard of it No before. one's ever done it before, have exactly. they? So, yeah. so, hello, Lauren. Welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. How are you doing? Are you nicely recovered now is, is my first question because that's a hell of a challenge that you've just done. Do you know what? I'm actually really surprised at um, how good I am feeling. Um, the day after, I could not move my shoulders. I was like a little T-Rex. I could only move like the bottom of my arms um and I just felt really exhausted um but then like the last couple of days I've just started to bounce back a bit and this evening I just went for a nice long walk which was the first time I've like done some proper kind of got out and about since um yeah so feeling really good nice nice so a question we ask all of our guests that come on to the podcast to kick things off is what has your journey through swimming been to the present day Okay. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm really lucky. I, um, have been brought up in Cornwall, um, specifically in Newquay where we're surrounded by incredible beaches, mm, you know, lovely 15 minutes from our house all the time. It's a surf life. Isn't um, it? so I've been really lucky grown up by the sea. Um, yeah, yeah. All of that. And, um, my, I'm from a real surfing family. So my dad was a British surfing champion. So it was kind of inevitable that I was going to end up in the sea somehow. Um, so as a kid, me and my sister used to just spend the time on the River Gannel or at the beach with my dad while he would do uh, surf lessons, you know, jumping um, off the harbour wall, um, <laughs> probably stuff I shouldn't be encouraging nowadays. <laughs> But, um, you know, that I, I took for granted that the water kind of was my second home. Um, so I learned to swim really early. My dad, I think he said he just chucked me in a pool one day and was like, I knew you'd find your way to the top. And that's kind of how my swimming journey started. That is that is the way to um, do it. Sounds very similar. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just chuck you in and hope it works out. So luckily it did. Um, and then just loads of time. And obviously just growing up in the sea, I became really comfortable in the water um and then when I got to like um eight or something like that I joined um Cormorants which is our like local swim club um and that was like my kind of first uh dip into uh competitive swimming which actually I realized is not my bag at all okay mm. um I definitely prefer swimming for um enjoyment than the competition side I you know I I did some competitions and um but just I, I just didn't like the nerves and the pressure and all that kind of thing that came with it. So um, it did, I did Cormorant, stuck with the club for a while and got to the point where, you know, going into my teenagers, it was like just before my GCSEs, they were starting to want me to train in the morning um, before school and that kind of thing. And then my dad actually said to me that one day he was like, come on, Lauren, let's go down to the beach. And I was like, Dad, I don't do beaches anymore. Um <laughs> I'd hit the the um, rebellious teenage stage, and then it all went a little bit downhill with my swimming from that point. Um, I think I found boys and alcohol a lot more appealing than a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, actually, from that point, so around fourteen, I I didn't swim. Um, I just stopped swimming completely, and 
um, you know, found myself in a really rebellious teenage stage that, you know, looking back now, I learned so much from it. But um, yeah, I did, I did rebel a little bit um, for a fair few years. Um, luckily, you know, carried on doing quite well at school. Um, swimming again just never kind of happened again until I went to university. Okay, um, interesting. Yeah, so then at university, obviously there's so many like sports clubs and societies that you can join in. Um, and on Fresh as Fair, I went along and saw the swimming and water polo team and I was like, oh, I used to love swimming. Like, I'm going to join the swim team. Um, and that was kind of where I fell in love with swimming again. And um, it was it was so different to what I'd experienced as a child because it was it there was such a a strong like team ethos and um, you know for anybody that's been to a university and been part of a sports team it like is just it's a culture and um, it like really made it made my time at university being part of the swimming team and I competed and I was the swim captain for a couple of years. Um, and trained really hard like we were really lucky in that um we had a swimming pool like pretty much where our um halls were so i could like swim three times a day oh that's very um, handy yeah and it was brilliant um you know obviously um trained hard and parties hard as well because that's what university is about exactly um, yeah. work hard play yeah. hard yeah you know the saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but just found like that you know that camaraderie and that community that um I suddenly had and with with all with the shared passion of just loving being in the water and swimming um you know and seeing my fitness and everything get so much better mm. um that was like a really like bit of a groundbreaking few years for me um and then I obviously graduated um and I moved back to Cornwall um and then that was when I kind of moved into the sea again um came back to Cornwall a little bit lost after university and was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, and so I did my Beach Lifeguard Award and started patrolling on one of the local beaches um, in Newquay, um, which was great. And obviously I was in the sea a lot. I had to swim a lot for that. You know, you have to do 400 metre time swim um, and that kind of thing. And that was when I started using the sea as my training ground rather than a swimming pool. Um, it's cheaper, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was fantastic. Um, and then, you know, I still used to go to the pool a lot. And then, um, actually, that then led me on to um, probably one of the most, I'd say, in my swimming background, the most um, uh, for me, like, kind of transformative parts of my like swimming background is that I'm I joined Nuki Surf Life Saving Club. And um, there was there was no females doing it. I was like one of the only females. And I was like, this is rubbish. Like, you know, I went along to a competition and it was all the guys, you know, I had great fun. And I was like, where are all the girls? So I decided to set up a ladies night um, and okay. um, did my coaching awards um, so that I could coach surf life saving. Um, you know, and swimming was always like my event, the event that like I wanted to do would be like, you know, the swim events. Um, and, and that just massively grew. I think like my first ladies session, I had four females turn up and um, I really worked and grew that section of the club over a four year period to the point where I um, we ended up having 30 females coming along and training every single week. Um, wow. And yeah, and we you know, we went and competed at the Nationals and the European Surf Lifesaving Championships. And um, it wasn't just about the swimming. What I realised is that swimming can be such a, like, healing thing because actually I had so many females coming along who, you know, we we have got massive body image issues as females and so many females who just didn't have the confidence to get in the sea and just needed that little boost and... Mm. um females who were suffering with their mental health and just wanted to try and find somewhere that they could try something new and it it became like four years of empowering females kind of into the water um yeah as well as that. obviously yeah. teaching mm. people to swim and um how to be safe in the sea and all that kind of thing and I was super lucky on that journey that I 
um, was enormous shortlisted twice, two years in a row actually for um, coach of the year, um, which was a real highlight for me, like coach of the year in Cornwall. And um, it, yeah, it was, yeah, it was an amazing part of my swimming journey yeah so, it sounds like you've done life. some amazing things really that's wow. well we, we've always said that swimming is a team sport and that's just a great example of it yeah honestly definitely. yeah so how did you get into yeah. how did you get into the challenge then how did we get to the 24 kilometers and 24 beaches over 24 hours how did that come about yeah so um obviously i work for shelterbox and i think we're going to talk about that in a little bit yeah but yeah. um working at shelterbox um i'm really lucky that you know we hear these incredible fundraising stories all the time of whether it's like little johnny who has decided he wants to um cycle around the block three times and um raise some money for shelterbox or little kids who are giving their birthday money um or you know other people that are just doing incredible incredible like physical feats and I, they just all I, whenever I hear the stories it like really warms me and then at the end of last year so it was around August last year I thought do you know what I, I need to stop like just like admiring other people I, maybe I need to actually do something for myself yeah okay. um and I'd you know we we all kind of wonder how much we can physically and mentally push ourselves um I know so that, yeah. I was like yeah like I was like I want to do something that really like I want to see how much I've got in me um so my initial plan was um to swim one mile on the hour every hour for 24 hours okay. not easy is it no not easy no so actually I feel like um when COVID hit, that was actually a blessing in disguise in regards to my challenge, because looking back, having just completed the one I did, uh, that would have been, you know, so much more of a physical challenge. Um, and then obviously COVID hit um, in March mm. and... God, that long ago closed. already. Yeah. That feels those, like ages ago, have doesn't gone, it? Haven't yeah. <laughs> Just disappeared. Oh, it's it. <laughs> and I think all of us who swim, like you guys are probably the same, like suddenly the pools are taken away. And it's it's crazy. Like... So the obviously we use a pool to film and we swim there every week and suddenly we found ourselves, we just went down to a local pond. It wasn't even that deep. No, it wasn't. I swear it was, it was yeah. less than two meters. It was yeah. less than two meters, probably up to your hip. And we were yeah. just going down there for a little paddle because yeah. we missed the water. Yeah. Oh, nuts. absolutely. We were the same. Like, we were walking along the river and I'd just be like, I want to get in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it definitely changed the challenge for you, didn't it? The COVID situation. Oh, yeah. Because I lost like three months of training time. And then I was like, do you know what? Up. Uh, I think I'm going to have to postpone it was the initial thing. And then I was like, nah, come on. Like, you know, actually this is a really rubbish time for the whole world. Like this might be the best year to do your challenge. So I just tr started to try to rethink how I could do it. And as it went, I realized I was really attached to the 24 thing for some reason. I think like I'd had so much on the 24 hours. I was like, Oh, how can I bring this in? Um, and then for me, it was all about raising awareness of what Shelterbox do, does and, you know, getting more people to know about the work that it does because it's an amazing charity. Yeah. Um, so I was like, we're blessed with like so many beaches here. Um, why don't I like swim 24 beaches? And then and then that was kind of that was how it was born. I was like, and then I could do a kilometer off each beach. So and I could then do that all in one day, maybe from like first light to last light. <laughs> Just and then started suddenly to I was snowball. like, there it is. So it's like an epiphany almost, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um Yeah. And that and that was kind of that was how it was born. Okay, so you talked about Shelterbox and you work for them. So why don't you tell everyone at home what they actually do? Because they were the leading force yeah. of your challenge. Yeah, okay. So um, Shelterbox is a Cornish charity. So it started about 16 years ago. So being a Cornish girl, I've always been aware of that charity. Um, and for me, being a Cornish girl, like I said, I've always been really proud of the fact that this Cornish charity is like kind of having a global impact. Um, and when I was lucky enough to get a job with them, so they're a disaster relief charity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just saw even more of the work that they do. So 
Shelterbox's vision is that no family is left without shelter after disaster hits. So we work with disaster struck communities and also in conflict zones such as Syria um, and provide emergency shelter and household items that enable families, so families are our focus, to kind of rebuild their lives and give them a little bit of hope when potentially they've lost everything. Mm. Um, that's a really, a, it's a really right. amazing chord. Oh, no, it's really uplifting. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. I didn't realise it was Cornish born, that charity. That it so- is indeed. Something it I've born learned in today. Houston. Wow, amazing. So you mentioned, um, obviously, yeah. COVID has happened, or happening, actually. It's still going on yeah, it's now. It's still going, don't forget um, that. It's terrible, really. Um, and obviously, we haven't been in a pool for three, four months. So how did this affect your training, or what did you do for your training beforehand? Yeah, so obviously before uh, COVID, I'd already started training for the initial challenge. So I'd been in the pool loads. Um, then COVID hit. And then the literally the minute they eased, I was like, get me to the beach. I need to get in the sea. Um, and I've always been a wetsuit swimmer. So I suddenly was like, do you know what? Actually, maybe I'm going to do this challenge in skins as well. because <laughs> Just like, make oh. it a little bit harder. Yeah. <laughs> I was like 24 kilometers in a wetsuit like you're not going to be able to get out of it quickly and dry and warm and I was like with a swimsuit I could change it every like kind of kilometer so um most important thing I've been doing was cold water training so I remember the first time like the swimsuit what was it just the start of May or something when uh restrictions eased and we headed to the beach and um I went in and I I mean it took me a while to get my head under (laughs) <laughs> um, and I managed to swim for 15 minutes and my husband was like, oh, how was it? And I was like, I think my bodily organs are shutting down. <laughs> I'm so cold. Uh, I was like, this app, like, what is this? This is crazy. Like, I can't do this. <laughs> um, and I stuck with it. Like every day I was like, get in the beach, get in the sea. Um, so, and then it's amazing how quickly you acclim- I acclimatized to the cold. So that was a big part of it, like just training for the cold. And then... It was just time in the water, really, and you know I work full time and um, I'm I'm a mum and a wife, and um, it was really important to me that you know train anyone who's trained for an event knows how much time it takes. And every evening and weekend I was swimming, so it was amazing. You know we got my husband and my son out on kayaks, and so actually the last four months every single swim they've been uh, my kind of safety um, out on the kayaks. Uh, kayaking alongside me which has been incredible because it's kind of brought training and family time together um and then obviously did some running to just try and increase my base fitness and Ooh, i've tried really runs. hard to do resistance bands and strength stuff but i just find it really boring yeah i understand that it's a very different mindset to do any sort of kind of land training land isn't based it? stuff is a completely different mindset you're right yeah so a swimmer who decided to do some running for fitness, that's a, that's a new one to me because most swimmers stay, stay well away from running. Yeah, it was more, I, I've always done a little bit of running and I, I started running a lot more during lockdown. So it was probably more just I'd got into a habit and actually mm. I carried it on. So um, actually, like, as it eased, my friend messaged me, and I wasn't sure at this point that my swim challenge was going to go ahead, and she was like, hey, let's sign up to the Great North Run, the virtual Great North Run, and I was like, oh, yeah, amazing. So actually, (laughs) I ended up having to, like, commit to doing 40 runs in the four months that I was... um, 40? Or however long, it wasn't that long, and, like, two months or something. It sounds like you're... up to my challenge. It sounds like you're a bit of a sucker for punishment here. (laughs) Yeah, well, I didn't realise I was actually, but actually reflecting on it, yeah, it seems like that is, <laughs> that is exactly what I am. <laughs> so when you were doing the swim, what sort of difficulties did you find yourself kind of kind of having to resolve on the spot, really? Things that you didn't see coming? Uh, this is so interesting. Um, yeah, it. I think the biggest one for me was um you know this wasn't just a swimming challenge this was a logistical challenge as well like we spent months um with google maps aa route planner because we had to get from beach to beach and what i think i didn't realize is actually how how easy it is to lose your focus on that travel time um 
you know, I was getting out of the sea and into a warm car and then traveling. And it, so it was like definitely like trying to keep my focus when we were traveling to the next beach was um, something that I really had to concentrate on. Um, and also just mindset, like, I mean, all swimmers can probably relate to the fact that swimming is a pretty lonely sport. Um, yeah. You are completely in your own head and where you know if I'd have been doing a run challenge someone could have ran alongside me and when I'm going I can't do this someone could be like yeah you can mate you'll be fine and I had one part of the swim it was um the the longest kind of like block swim I'd done was a 10 kilometer and around the 11 kilometer mark I think my body went hey 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 like what is this I've not swam <laughs> further than 10k before and um I had this awful swim and I lost control of my mind. I let the demons in and um I was I remember crying while I was swimming, um, like with my goggles on, just going, I can't do this. Like this was stupid. Why did you ever think you you would be able to achieve this? And I did this for this whole swim and I turned at the like halfway point and started swimming back and found that I just counted my strokes I got I tried to like it was kind of mindfulness I was like I need to find something that's taking these bad thoughts away from me so I just counted my strokes up to 100 and then back again um, and I remember getting out of the beach and just crying saying to my little sister like I can't do this I need to like I'm done like it, it, what had I done then I'd done like 13 kilometers mm. so I was like over halfway um, so how did you push past um, that for the next swim do you know what? I didn't have to do anything. So I walked up the beach and the entire beach stood up and started clear, cheering um, and clapping and shouting like, you can do it. Wow. And it was one of the most like empowering moments. So I went from having the, the worst point I'd had so far in the swim to it being one of the absolute highlights. Because I just remember looking around and there was not one person on the beach not clapping for me and I was like wow like and and my mum and my little boy were going to be at the next beach so I suddenly was like yeah you can do this come on like you'll get to the next beach you see your mum and your son I can have a cuddle from them um and and suddenly I was like no I can do this again dry costume on something to eat and um yeah we just kind of headed to the next beach and then um we were quite on schedule so my support crew were like let's just spend a little bit of time like sorting you out so I like had a massage and um my sister's a nutritionist so she'd like sorted out these amazing all this amazing food for the day so mm. she fueled me right and just got me back into a good positive mindset I'd say that was definitely my biggest challenge um I think like not looking at the big picture like I think for anyone who's done endurance, it's like bite-sized chunks. And at that point, I'd started to look at the big picture. I'd started to go like, I've got to do everything I've just done again. Yeah, that's a dangerous place in swimming, place. isn't it? It just shows how mental sport is in general, I think. Yeah, I really hope someone captured that moment on that beach for you to play back to you in the future. Because that just sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, and it was really, really amazing. Um and I think also it was it was like just one of the biggest challenge was like swimming 24K. I've never even, you know, 10K was all I'd ever done. Um, and I just think this is like, I've told a few people this and they've been like, oh, that's so amazing. And, you know, everyone was like, how did you get to the end? And family has always been the most important thing to me. And, you know, with Shelterbox, I think everybody coming out of lockdown has realised how important uh, family is and having a safe space to call home which is exactly what kind of what Shelterbox provides um so a few people said like how did you get to 24k and I was like my family were on that beach that final beach so I was like I just kept thinking I've just got to swim home mm. I've just got to swim home to my family um and that's what got me like to the end of so like complete it, yeah. yeah I bet that last kilometer was probably one of the easiest knowing they were all waiting on the beach for you Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's probably, probably the fastest you've As ever I swam. I turned the last headland. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> we've had um, we've had a friend of a podcast who's come on before, John Myers. 
I think he swam with you on one of the stages, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. So he reached out to me on um, social media, actually, and just said, I'd love to come and swim with you. And I was like, I'm not letting people swim with me because it suddenly everyone then decides they want to swim with you. And it all turns into an event rather than like a fundraiser. So, yes, okay, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously he's got a wealth of experience in endurance swimming, so he was the real like um, asset to just to have him there on the day to kind of almost help, coach, I suppose, um, when things are hard. Yeah. yeah, what you'll need to do next is to uh, try his ice barrel. That's an experience. Oh, he showed me a picture of that. Yeah, we we I'm spent. Not for that. How long did we spend in there? We spent five, five minutes. minutes. And that oh my la- god, have you done it? Yeah, we have. We gave it a go. 0. 0.9 it was in there. Yeah. yeah. 0. 0.9 degrees. Oh. And it lasted a lifetime. Oh no. <laughs> I think our first swim was 12 degrees and that was cold enough for me. <laughs> was that the coldest temperature you experienced then out of all the beaches? Yeah, I think we experienced between 12 to 17 were like pretty much, they were like the temperatures throughout the day. Um, and obviously the first one was at 6am. So there was, there'd been mm. no like light on the no sun on the water yet and oh that one was really cold in fact we did the first kilometer and then so it's like 6 30 a.m in the morning and i remember running along a par beach with my like swim hat goggles and swimming costume on and these dog walkers walked past and they were like wow we're impressed and i was like <laughs> oh my god what am i doing like people must think i'm nutter <laughs> See, I think I've only, I've only swam once in the sea, I think, if I remember right. You're and scared of, of things touching Well, you. I'm pretty scared of it, yeah. <laughs> but, um, of course, Cornwall's quite known for its surf and its waves and stuff. So do you have, did you have any experience, uh, any difficulties with the waves at all? So, bit, so we've got the north and south coast of Cornwall. So I've been brought up in the north coast, like, so used to, like, swimming and swell. But when I planned this challenge, that was a real big consideration was to which coast I'd do it on. And, um... The south coast is pretty much always calm. Um, you know, it needs to be pretty stormy for it to get swell. So it was a kind of a safe bet. And honestly, I woke up on that morning and I was blessed by the gods. The sea was like mill pond. Um, <laughs> so I was really lucky on the day because it would have been, you know, it could have definitely had a lot of wind chop and that kind of thing. And yeah. it was just beautiful all day, every single swim. It's almost like they knew you were doing it. I know, I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, the, vi- the virus was a blessing. The weather was good. Oh, just do it again. It's fine. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so something you wanted to cover is what sort of lessons you found out about yourself by doing the challenge. Yeah, I mean, this was something I never... This was kind of an added an added bonus that I never thought I would get from doing it. You know, you, you reflect a lot a few days afterwards, like your adrenaline's pumping the day after and you're buzzing and then you know as you start to like for me as well like break down each of the sections and um think about what I'd experienced it was just you know it I'm a real self-doubter in everything I do I need a little lot of reassurance all the time that I'm doing a good job or you know whatever and this swim has made I just came out of it going do you know what I believe in myself now because I've just proved to myself that I can do something if I really want it um so I think that's the first lesson and like something I'd encourage anyone if they're doing like an endurance event of some kind is like believe in yourself because it's amazing when you believe in yourself what you can actually achieve absolutely um Mm. And then I think as well, like my resilience levels, like I did not realize that I had the resilience that I had. And um, I I think I probably always consider myself relatively weak. Um, And I'm like, you know, I came out of it going, no, you know what? You, you can, you can cope with hard times and you can, you can come through them. And um, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, like the bravery to step out of your comfort zone, I think, and um, realise what you're really made of. Um, And my sister said something actually to me. She was like, you know what, she does a lot of exercise. And she said, but I never go out of my comfort zone. And I think, you know, I'd love to say to anyone, like, you know, take that step and kind of, I don't know if anyone's read Aunt Middleton's The Fear Bubble. It's like one of my all-time favourite books. And it's Mm. like, step into that fear bubble and um, out of your comfort zone um, because what that's how you're going to really be able to see what you can achieve 
Um, and for me, that was like a really big thing. So from those lessons that you've learned then, like you've just explained, have you set any future challenges? Have you got anything else planned in the future? Uh, I really wanted to register for the polar bear challenge this year. So the cold water, uh, like, yeah, you just have to do like 20 minute swims in like freezing water, like however many times a week. Um, but the registration was on the day of my swim and oh. obviously uh. the next day they'd all sold out. So I couldn't do that. So um, one thing I am going to do is swim skins through the winter. Oh, um, okay. So I'm going to try and get in three times a week. Probably not for very long, but at least dunk um, <laughs> through the winter. That's brave. Um, yeah, this... And then I'm thinking about a 2022 challenge, like give myself a year off. But I'm thinking maybe go a bit more tropical next time. So maybe like swim like the Greek islands or nice or, or the, something like Gibraltar that. Gibraltar like, Strait or something like that. On tour. So it's a bit warmer. Yes. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's definitely given me the bug to um, like endurance. I've definitely found my thing like endurance swimming is where I'm at. Like I've never been the fastest swimmer, but I'm a bit like a, a draw yourself funny. <laughs> just, just keep on keep going. going. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you yeah. found your niche. So we started off this podcast by saying we think you've raised over £4,000 right now. What is your actual total to recording date? I'm currently on £5,600, which has blown my mind. Wow. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to link in the description of this podcast your, is it Just Giving page? Yes. Yep. So we'll link that into the podcast notes below for anyone who wants to donate or just wants to find more about Shelterbox, really. Yes, we'll definitely link Shelterbox. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yes. Well, thank you very much for coming onto the show. Yeah, Lauren, it's honestly, it's an amazing challenge. And given the difficulties of training for it during COVID and even sea temperatures in September kind of nuts to me that you managed to do 24 kilometers the physical the mental side the logistics side it's all one big massive challenge and uh yeah congratulations on completing it thank you very much yeah um yeah i'm really happy i did complete it and we look forward to hearing about any future challenges you may commit to or maybe even if you go to john's ice barrel because that that's a fun experience as well <laughs> i will let you know if i go in john's ice barrel okay th- thank you so much for joining us Yes, thank you very much, Lauren. No problem. All right, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.